So, not so long ago, I made a short trip to the western part of Russia. Along the way, I observed a large number of interesting stone structures scattered along the coast of the Black and Baltic Sea. Some were made several hundred years ago. The ruins of castles and defensive walls, sculptural compositions and dried fountains. And some were built recently, but I tried to copy the style of those times. In the process of sightseeing, I took photographs of architectural elements that made me interested. The accumulated collection of those pictures makes me fantasize about how I could combine its individual pieces into complete ideas for my paintings. In my head especially stuck the view of a small section of the wall, composed of a massive stone blocks that enclosed the countryyard of an abandoned castle from a modern street. To go through it and get into the countryyard, you had to dive into the shadow of an arched opening. At first glance, the scene did not seem worth it to me, but the hard black shadow from the bright midday sun created some eerie sensation of a bottomless abyss. And with this feeling, I decided to just start the painting, with the hope that when I see the sketch in large format, I will get the idea of how to give it meaning. To make the composition perceived by the viewer more solid, I divided the canvas into thirds and quarters and tied the main lines of the composition to them. The decision of what will be the center of the picture I left on my subconscious. For me personally, this method works pretty well. If I think about something too much, then I only accumulate irritation in myself, and the result looks tortured, not born of inspiration. Usually, the ideas that I really like come to me in my dreams. Sometimes when I wake up I remember that I was dreaming of something cool, but I can't remember what specifically. But sometimes the image is very bright and I manage to sketch it. For this, I always keep paper and pencil next to the bed. This time I got the idea to use chaotic forms of crumpled piece of paper. If you look at this through the eyelids obscured by sleep, then you can start to see images and figures intervened in a crazy dance. The next morning I proceeded to a detailed study. The application of the basic color spots, black shadows, mold on a stone. At first I do this with acrylic paints, because their quick drying time allows you to make several layers of paint on top of each other in a short period of time. After that, I can pay attention to our point of interest in the picture, the uncanny forms of an unknown creature in the shadow. In fact, at first I wanted to be only barely noticeable that there was something in there. But I liked the creature so much that I did not find the strength to make it less visible. After I have outlined the shapes of the figures with a pencil, I give them volume by marking with the paint the darkest and brightest areas in accordance with the light source and then I just mix them together. To make the image more surreal, I decided to get rid of the yellow shade of natural stone by coating the canvas with a layer of translucent zinc white. By adjusting the ratio of pigment to oil in the solution, it is possible to accentuate the places in which falls direct sunlight and to separate them from the forms turned slightly sideways. I spend a little more time to draw the bricks in the pavement, because the lower parts seem to me too simple. To complete, it remains only to retain shadows to the few prominent forms. Add a couple of cracks to the stone, make more clear the joints between the blocks and smooth out some places that prevent the eye from gliding freely on the image surface. 